Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So, it's summertime now and it's pretty much peak summer with 36, 37 degree ambient temperatures. It's ridiculous. Playing games on your laptop, on your gaming laptop is even more ridiculous. Laptop is getting extremely hot. Probably your hands are getting sweaty. Your mouse is not able to move because everything is just covered with sweat. It's disgusting. But the biggest problem that most people are facing right now probably is their gaming laptops overheating pretty crazily. Thermal throttling and all that. Now one of the most common ways that I see on the internet is that people buy laptop coolers. But truth be told, laptop coolers don't do nothing. Like they are not effective. The reason is that our laptop has built-in fans, most of these gaming laptops, which spin at really high RPMs when the laptop gets hot. So when there is a uh, already a couple of fans inside which is spinning at really high RPMs, Using an external um, cooler where the fan doesn't, where the fan moves really slowly, like 1400-1500 RPM, it doesn't really affect. Imagine you have, have a very strong fan and you uh, put another similar sized fan with it, which spins at much lower RPMs. Will that cause any cumulative effect? No. So some laptop coolers do help. Like if you have, a, let's say, a laptop with big vents at the bottom, and you have some powerful fans inside. So you can get a bigger laptop cooler with a bigger fan, which also spins at, let's say 2400 RPM, something like that. And your laptop has big vents. That's when a laptop cooler may be effective because you are able to move a large volume of air inside at a rapid pace. But most laptop coolers are not like that. They are mostly spinning at 1400 to 1500 RPM and they have small fans. So they are not really effective. So to cut the crap, the most definitive way to cool down your laptop during summers is to open it up, clean it up if there is dust build up and to repaste the CPU and the GPU with some good quality thermal compound like the one we're going to use that is Geely GC Extreme. I found Geely GC Extreme to be quite effective on these Ryzen laptops better than Cryonaut. I use Cryonaut on my Intel laptop but on these Ryzen laptops with more cores I feel that Geely GC Extreme works better. I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's a little more denser and less fluid, like uh, unlike the Cryonaut. Cryonaut. Cryonaut, in my opinion, is the best when it comes to PCs and desktop hardware. And it also has the best thermal conductivity among any non-electrically conductive thermal paste. However, for some reason, Geely GC Extreme seems to work better on these Ryzen laptops. I don't know why, but that doesn't matter. Let's try and repaste our laptops and see what the effect is. Right now, my laptop is over heating and thermal throttling like crazy. I'll show you a cinnamon run and then we'll repaste it and then I'll do a cinnamon run again, thermal throttling test. And I'll also give you some tips to keep your laptop cool during the summer or in any time. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get right into the video. So for this particular test, we are using the notebook fan control software because this laptop's fans are not that aggressive. So I want to enable maximum fans from the beginning. And if you want to know how I use the notebook fan control software in this laptop to control its fans, you can go and check out my video on my channel. I have links to it down in the description as well as in the cards above. So let's start the test. And you can see as soon as we start the test, the temperatures shoot up quite quickly and reach about 99 degrees centigrade and holds that temperature throughout the whole 10 minutes thermal throttling test. This is a very demanding test guys. In real world scenario, you won't be uh, generally dealing with such scenarios where all the cores and threads are stressed to 100%. But yeah, this is a thermal throttling test. So it is what it is. And you can see the temperature reaches about 100 degrees centigrade on the course and it holds throughout the test. So at the end we reach a score of 79.63 and now let's repaste and see how much improvement we get.
okay so now let's rerun the test and compare this run and do keep an eye on the temperature at the same point of time versus our previous run and also keep an eye on the tdb or the package power of the cpu and you can see that this time our temperature rises much more gradually this is a hardcore thermal throttling test and you can see the temperature is rising quite gradually it's not a sh big shoot so this is what happens when you repaste your laptop it's better able to conduct the thermal it's better able to transfer the heat from the die of the cpu to the you know the heat pipes and you can see that rise is much more gradual and in real world use you won't see this type of spikes uh, which is good so let's wait and watch and see how much is the score at the end So at the end we get about a 7% boost so the boost may not seem that much you know with regards to the final score but the reality is that in real world day to day applications as you saw in this test the temperature rise was much gradual and in real world applications or while gaming you will not see such high temperatures anymore and also the fans will be much more quieter and much more silent most of the time all right now for some tips so first of all if you have a intel laptop i do recommend you to undervolt the laptop undervolting will give you more performance at lower power drop which also means longer sustained performance and less heat so undervolting is a must when it comes to intel laptops in my opinion and it is one of the best features of intel laptops that you can still undervolt them just like the pcs whereas in ryzen you can undervolt it so if you don't know how to undervolt you can follow my guide that i have on my channel link is up in the cards and also in the description Whereas if you have a Ryzen laptop, especially if a Ryzen 4600H or 5600H with 6 cores, I recommend you to use these Ryzen controller settings. That is, you lock your CPU to 35 to 45 watt. Because I feel with the 6 core laptop, it is enough if you have an upper limit of 45 watt and a lower limit of 35 watt. That is enough for all your performance. So let's test it out. And so here you can see that locking the TDP at 45 watt at maximum, it drops our overall temperatures by about 5 degrees centigrade or so. And the, again, the control and the rise of temperature is more gradual and we don't lose much performance, it's almost barely a 3-4% drop. So I feel 45 watt on the CPU for a 6 core Ryzen CPU is 
just enough. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Do like, share, and subscribe, and let me know in the comments down below if you're facing thermal throttling or overheating and did repasting work for you. All right, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Peace.